The book of Jude, we'll begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and the brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Christ Jesus and called, mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, aren't you glad everybody saved, got saved the same way? Through Jesus Christ, huh? Uh, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We sure do bless your holy name. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good spirit in the house of God tonight. Or just a, a free spirit, just an enjoyable spirit. And of course, we know where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And God, we thank you for the good testimony. We thank you for the good people of God. And Father, I pray that you would uh, bestow your richest blessings upon each of these that are assembled here tonight. Meet every need of their hearts and lives and bless them with all temporal and spiritual blessings. Father, I pray for those that are working with the children on the other side, that, God, you'd bless their efforts. I pray for those children, those that have been saved. I pray that they'd grow in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Those that haven't, I pray that the Word of God would find a nice lodging place in their heart. And, Lord, they'd uh, trust the Lord before it's too late. And those that haven't even reached the age of accountability, Lord, I pray, too, that the Word of God would stay fresh in their heart so when they become of proper age, they put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Now, Father, help us tonight. And Lord, just bless as only you can. Speak to our hearts, enlighten our minds. Uh, and God, truly edify, build up the family of God. And Father, we'll not fail to thank you for that. Be with those that are sick, those that would love to be here tonight. But uh, Lord, physically, they cannot be here. I pray you would help them and bless them touch them, help them the next uh, point in time, they'll be able to come back to the house of God. Uh, now, Father, be with every true church preaching the word of God tonight. Bless and God send revival throughout this land. Save sinners and glorify your name. We'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to draw your attention to a couple things as a way of introduction. I want you to notice, first of all, the called. Look at verse number one again. Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Can I say something about believers? First of all, believers are sanctified by the Father. We find that they are secured in the Son, they're preserved by the Son, but it says, and called, we are sent by the Spirit. The Spirit of God sends every believer to do something for the glory of God. It may be to invite your neighbor to church. It may be to uh, send tracts. And a good way to send tracts, if you, uh, uh, you haven't heard this yet, uh, uh, a lot of times you get junk mail and you get themselves uh, addressed uh, envelopes so that's already uh, got the postage paid and all that. Just put a track in there and mail it back to them. You never know. Whoever opens that... Might read that track, get born again. Uh, 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 I don't know what God's got for you to do, but God didn't save you to just sit around. Uh, God saved you so he can use you to impact somebody else's life. Uh, and we all have a calling on our life. We were called to be saved. We're called to serve. One of these days we're going to be called to go to glory. What a blessing uh, uh, for the calling of God on our lives. We see the called. I want you to notice, if you will, the contending. Look at verse number 3, very wonderful verse. When we started our Baptist distinctive study, we brought out this verse. Uh, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. As children of God, we have a great responsibility. 
The truth has been passed down through generations to us, and we are to contend for it and pass it on to the next generation. Uh, very important. Uh, the closer we get to the coming of the Lord, the more watered down Christianity has become. It amazes me of things that are done in the name of Christ today. And folks, uh, how are, are other people going to know the difference if we don't show them and live it before them and uh, express it to them? We are to earnestly contend. There are some things we're not to back up on. We're to, we're to stand for, and we're to contend for, and we're to uh, certainly not only debate, but fight for if it comes to it. There are just some things that are worth fighting for. And let me help you something. There are some things worth dying for. Mm, there sure are. And Jude is exhorting us that we should contend. We should contend for our beliefs. I mean, we believe what Jesus taught. We ought to contend for that. We ought to contend for our Bible. Just about every preacher comes through here mentions the King James Bible. You know why? Because a lot of people don't use it anymore. And the Holy Spirit only wrote one, and that's the one that we're going to use. Mm. Uh, thank God we've got truth. I don't need it watered down to help me understand it better. I need to become better acquainted with the author. The closer I get to the Lord, the more he enlightens me to understand. Mm. Uh, we need to contend for our Bible, our beliefs, but we also need to contend for the body of Christ. Brother Ray, help me out. There are folks fanning, and that's getting on my nerves. Come and lower this thing. It's 72 degrees in here. I told you I'm the heaviest I've ever been. I'm sweating, bro. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hot. We've got a hot box. But we ought to contend for the body of Christ. Brother Phil said it a minute ago. Uh, uh, he believes this is the best church that uh, 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 he said in the world. It's not the best in the world, but that sure is close in my opinion. But let me help you with something. If we don't fight for our church, our church will cease to exist. Hmm? We ought to fight for it. You ought to fight in your prayer closet for it. You ought to fight by faithfully attending it and faithfully funding it. You ought to fight by, if you hear somebody run it down, uh, rebuke them. Just say, no, that's not our church. Our church is most loving, most giving, most caring. We enjoy the things of God. Fight for your church. Uh, if you don't fight for it, it won't last long. We've got to contend for it. Nothing worth having comes free, by the way. Hmm? There are some things you've got to fight for. There are some things you've got to long for, and some things you've got to work for. Huh? Nowhere in the Bible do we find where we're to be spiritual hobos. Hmm? You're sitting here in this building tonight. This didn't come at no cost or no expense. People fought for it. People made certain it, it uh, uh, continued when there were days when it didn't look like it was, Brother Clint, Brother Eddie. There were some dark days about 20 years ago, 21, 22 years ago now. But somebody contended for it, kept the doors open. Hmm? In the building you're in tonight, people gave. People worked. People have labored to keep it looking this nice. Hard to believe this building 16 years old. Why? Because people invest and they care about the church. You need to, you need to contend for it. Amen. Well, we find the called. We find the contending. But I want you to notice the condemned. Look at verse number 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares. This is why Jude tell them, you've got to contend. Said you got some that have crept in. One time I preached a message on creeps. And they crept in, a bunch of creeps. There are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God, our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, say they denied him by their actions. Now look down at verse number 12. It goes on to continue to describe this crowd. It said, These are spots in your feast of charity. And uh, it says, When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, 
carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Notice the condemned. They're lewd. Verse number 4, it says, turning the grace of our God into lascivious. That means uh, 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 being lewd or having lustful desires. Can I say, lust is of the world. Lustful desires ought not be found within the body of Christ. You ought not come to church to lust after people. But that, that church had them. They were full of lasciviousness. Can I say this? They were lewd. They were limited. Verse 12 says that the trees didn't, didn't produce fruit and, and they were clouds without water and, and all kinds of... They're limited. They don't bring any assets to the house of God. But uh, can I say, they're also lost. Look at verse 13. It says that mm, it's reserved the blackness of darkness forever to this crowd. They're lewd, they're limited, and they're lost. So I want to preach this little thought tonight. I want to preach on some people you find at church. Some people you find at church. Now you hang with me for a minute, but I got to think about some folks you'll find at church. Can I say, first of all, you'll find takers at church. They just take, 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 take. They don't ever add anything. But all they do is take. We'll have dinner on the ground. They won't bring anything. But they'll take a container full of stuff home with them. Huh? They don't ever give a tithe and an offering, but boy, they'll whine about needing groceries, and they'll take it if the church will give them groceries. Church will pay their light bill, their gas bill. They'll pray on some good-natured person in the church about how their house is falling down and get somebody to come over and work on their house or work on their car or work on their lawnmower. They, they just take. Now listen, every now and then, we're all going to need some help. You're going to need some help. You're going to face some things where you just don't have the means and it's a wonderful thing, as Brother Phil said in his testimony, have a church family where if you've got a need, this crowd right here will do what it takes to meet the need. What a blessing. But can I say, it's different than having a need and being a take, 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 takers. Huh? I've seen that crowd. They're takers. You've got to watch them. Huh? We had little bookmarks. Give out bookmarks. They'll take 50. I mean, they're just takers. You put it out there, they're going to take it. Huh? Time to time, people bring stuff put on the back table before you got out there and put free. Huh? They'll take the table if it wasn't nailed down. I'm telling you, they're takers. Talking about takers. You'll find takers at the church. Huh? Thank God for givers. But you'll find takers. I thought about some other folks you'll find at church. You'll find fakers. They got a false face, false intentions. They're fake. Can I help you? I don't like a fake. Hmm? Just be who God made you. I don't like a fake. Hmm? You know, the worst thing in the world is Brother Clint comes in one day and starts trying to act like Brother Phil. That'd be crazy. Here you're meek and you're quiet. You don't say much. And when you do, it's pretty profound. Direct opposite over there. You know what I'm saying? Huh? Are you still good? Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Phil Taco Bell over there, huh? But there are fakers. They're all the time trying to put on a dog and pony show. They're all the time trying to act what they're not. Uh, uh, I, I, there are preachers that way. They'll go away to Bible college. They come back and they want to act like the preacher of the Bible college. And they all got to have the same vernacular and the same uh, 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 way they dress and the same way they... I'm glad you don't dress like anybody. What a blessing, huh? Authentic right there, huh? 
What a blessing. I like it. He always, well, sometimes he doesn't, but most of the time he looks good. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we can tell. But I mean, fakers are all the time trying to be something they're not. The Lord saves people in their low estate, and he wants them to be them plus him. Are you listening? Don't be somebody else. Just be who God made you. I just, uh, I, I just don't like fake people. I just don't. Uh, got fake laughs. Uh, just phony. Huh? I don't like it. I don't like phonies. I don't like fakes. You'll find fakers at the church. You'll find takers. You'll find movers and shakers. I despise that crowd. What's a mover and shaker? That's the first time you go to church and you got people to act like used car salesmen. They want to know everything about you. Huh? And they're always hyped up and they're always, you know, clicking all the time. Huh? Always, everything's a high with them. Never have a bad day. Everything's wonderful. Jesus is glorious. Hallelujah. Blessing. What a blessing. Huh? I want to tell you something. Even Jesus had bad days. You're not always on the mountaintop. I'm always very leery of folks that are always on the mountaintop. Because when they come down, they're going to crash big time. Uh, listen, again, we're not living in the sweet by and by. We're dealing with the nasty now and now. Sometimes you have bad days. Sometimes you have bad weeks. Uh, occasionally you might have a bad month. Uh, that day, hey, Jesus is good and Jesus is real and Jesus will help you in your bad times. Uh, uh, but listen, nobody's on the mountaintop all the time. Uh, I'm thinking that song Miss Marcy sings about uh, uh, just uh, kind of hanging onto the rope, that last uh, hope of thread, you know. Sometimes you're on the last piece of thread of your rope. Just keep hanging until the Lord shows up, huh? But there's some, they're always movers and shakers. Always got something going on. I, I, I went years ago to go hear a preacher friend of mine preach. Just wanted to hear him preach. I just show up. The pastor comes over. I don't know what he was doing, Brother Josh. He's trying to guilt, grill me, see where I come from, see if I'm visiting his church, see if I'm looking for a church and all that. Well, I don't give him any of that. Short one-word answers drives him crazy. Huh? Good to have you. Thanks. Where you come from? Florence. Are you looking for a church? Nope. Huh? Listen, most people when they visit church, they're new to the area, or they've been invited, or they've decided they need a change, or they're looking for a church, they come in, and there's some apprehension. They're coming in, they don't know anybody here. Some of us don't look real pretty. The preacher's going to be mean and loud and spit and slobber and all that kind of stuff. I mean, they don't know what to expect. The last thing that they really want is somebody getting in their face and finding out all their business. I mean, I know this guy, he'd, he'd, somebody'd show up in their church, he'd know where they worked, know how long they'd lived in their house, know how much they own on their mortgage. I mean, he knew everything about them. That, that drives me crazy. You know, we give out the visitor's card. Brother Rod's faithful to do that. And, and when folks fill them in, rarely do I ever get them check the box they'd like a visit from the preacher. They don't. They want to come try out a church and see if they like it first. See how the worship is. See how the people are. Because I guarantee you, most churches they go into, people aren't friendly. Mm. And so, they don't need a mover and shaker. Used car salesman Herb Tarlick showing up going to drive them away. Huh? Some of you, I've been your pastor for 15, 20 years, and I don't know where you work. I figure if you want me to know, you tell me. I'm just not in your business kind of guy until I'm preaching that book, and that book will get in your business, but I won't. But you got movers and shakers in the church. They make me nervous. You know who a mover and shaker is? The guy shows up first service, sits on the front row, no offense, sits on the front row, 
and at the end of the service tells the preacher, oh, I love this church, I'm going to join this church, boy, I want to do something in this church, and three weeks later you can't find him. That's a mover and shaker guy because he's always on the move. It's like a hummingbird, darts in and out. Never gets rooted and grounded. Well, you get movers and shakers in churches. Then you get forsakers. Paul wrote about Demas in 2 Timothy 4.10, For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is in, departed unto Thessalonica. Hmm? Say, so, what happened? Demas worked with the apostle Paul. Can you think of anybody outside of Jesus or John the Baptist you'd like to hang out with more than the apostle Paul? How many would like to hang out with him? Y'all weird. He spent most of his ministry in jail. Huh? Most of the part of the Bible that he wrote, he wrote behind bars. But can you imagine being an apprentice to the Apostle Paul and then saying, nah, I think I'll go back to the world. Hmm? Let me help you with something. I've been at this a long time. Do you realize we'd have had to build 10 years ago if everybody that came would still be here? Say, why they leave, Brother Doug? Everybody's got a reason. There's a myriad of reasons. Demas forsook Paul because he loved the world more than he loved the ministry. The devil's slick. He's sly. He's crafty. He knows how to put thoughts into people's minds. He knows how to put snares before people. He knows how to entice people. And the devil will give people a reason to turn their back on God if you'll give him an inch he'll take a mile you're at this long enough your heart will get broke because somebody you love and you go to church with no longer goes to church with you there are forsakers even Peter told the Lord he said I'll go with you all the way to, de to, to death the Lord said for the cockroach you'll deny me huh he did he denied the Lord that very night Friend, don't boast in what you will or won't do. You ought to boast in, Lord willing, I'll still be serving the Lord next week. Uh, listen, a lot more spiritual people than anybody in this building, including the guy behind the pulpit, have failed the grace of God. And there are folks who will forsake the faith. I thought about some other people you'll find in church. There are wakers. That's not really a word, but it rhymed. You know what a waker is? Well, it's not. You know what a waker is? Somebody always causing waves. You know how they talk about the wake, the waves coming in? Wakers are always causing waves. Thanks be unto God we don't have that crowd. Uh -uh. Somebody always causing waves. Have a business meeting. We need to do this. Everybody's like, amen, then you'll have one. But preacher... You know, want to spend money to do this, but preacher. Want to send the kids to Pigeon Ford, but preacher. You know what? Sheep follow goats, but. Mm. Uh. But there are some who are always causing waves in churches. I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Y'all want a little secret? Most preachers of our stripe, most pastors, are on stomach medicine. You know why? Because Baptist causes ulcers. That's a true story. Most, most preachers I know are on some form of thanks be unto God for Nexium. Hallelujah. What a blessing. Uh, why? Because you've got folks that cause waves. Uh, Brother James, some's intent, unintentional, but most of them are just dissatisfied and they don't want anybody else getting any help. Hmm? They're contrary to everything. Cantankerous. Huh? Thanks be unto God. We don't have any of them. We say, well, why don't we have any of them? Because we done run them off. It's taken me 20 years, but we run a bunch of them, that crowd off. I just put Phil in their pew. They leave. That's a, that's a blessing. Huh? Phil, go sit in them people's lap. Okay, preacher. Taco Bell. They're gone. That's not his first. Hey. The best one was when I was preaching on 
dying and I was preaching on terrible ways to die, dying in a fire and I talked about drowning and how bad that would be, you know, knowing you're sucking in that water and you're going to die and all that and he, he said, yeah, I'm getting eaten by a dinosaur. <laughs> Where'd that come from? <laughs> he didn't have Taco Bell on the brain that night. He had Barney on the brain that night. I didn't really hear him, but everybody cracked up. And I said, I don't know what he said, but probably a good thing I didn't know at the time. Hmm? But there are wakers. They just cause waves all the time. Just problems. Listen, church is where we come to get away from our problems. Church ought to be an oasis. Church ought to be a haven. We ought to come and hear about the Lord and His goodness and His greatness and what He can do for us and how He can help us and find them green uh, 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 grass and pastures in the midst of our deserts. I know a church that split because they put plastic garbage cans in the bathroom instead of metal. Church split right down the middle. That's a true story. Why? Because they weren't there about the Lord's business. Hmm? They had some wakers in there. Huh? Then I thought about this. They have, there's acres. And I'm not talking about miles of grass. Hmm? That's not a word either. Acres. They're always aching. Hmm? Listen. If you're over the age of 45, you got pain. You're over 50, you got more pain. Approaching 60, I can't wait. Hallelujah, what a blessing. <laughs> Brother Bob, how's the 80s treating you, man? Huh? <laughs> Bad. <laughs> Things you used to be able to do, now you just get worn out thinking about it. Everybody's got something. You're in flesh. Hmm? Living in this part of the country, we all got sinuses. Everybody's got something that will ail you. But you notice in churches there are some that dwell. Uh, the church my granddaddy grew up in, I'm trying to think of the old guy's name. He just visited every now and then. But it, you got him. That's him. Every time he showed up, he talked about his bursitis. I thought it was his wife or something. I didn't know what bursitis was. But he took him with him everywhere he went. His bursitis, his bursitis, his bursitis. Huh? They got Advil for that, John. But every time he showed up, he had something going on. Hmm? You know what I found out about acres? They're always seeking attention. And they're jealous when others get attention instead of them. They always got problems, always got something going on because they want attention. Can I help you with something? When we come to the house of God, all the attention is supposed to go to Him. It's not about us. It's about Him. But there's some who wants attention. And heaven help you if you spend time talking to somebody else instead of them. Because they're acres. And there's some people... They're going to have one friend at a time. You ever know people like that? They're going to have one friend at a time. Well, we're a family. I can talk to you. Talk about your Volkswagen or something. I can go over there and talk to him. Then I can go talk to him. Go talk to her. Go talk. Because we're family. But heaven help you if there's an acre in the crowd and you go talk to their one friend and don't talk to them. That's my friend. What are you doing talking to my friend? Well, if you want to have friends, show yourself friendly. Quit aching about things. You'll have a lot of friends, huh? Nobody likes hanging around somebody that's miserable all the time. You know, you are what you eat. If you hang around somebody that's miserable all the time, guess what you're going to be? Miserable. Hmm? Heaven help you. But there's, there's just some folks that are acres. Just ache about everything. What they're doing is they're belly aching about everything. Huh? And I thought about this one. There are snakers. I had to put that one in there. Snakers. That's not a word either. 
It's not because I got a red line under it when I typed it in. <laughs> They're snakes. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. They're portraying themselves as something they're really not. They're always sneaking around. I've watched people be have, having a conversation in the vestibule, and they'll be around the corner just listening to everything you say. You're not talking to them. What are they doing that for? They're sneaking around. Hmm? You know why Jesus called them wolves in sheep's clothing? It's a wolf that devoured a sheep and then put on its clothing. Can I help you something? Sheep is what the Lord called us because sheep follow. But also sheep aren't real bright. And a lot of times in our generosity and our kindness and all that we get taken advantage of because we're not looking for snakes and wolves in the midst of God's people but sometimes they'll show up thank God for a shepherd I've actually had people get mad when we have had wolves and I've run them off I won't mention somebody gets mad when I run folks off but he's my buddy <laughs> If there's somebody that comes and their intention's not learning about the Lord, worshiping the Lord, or being involved in the Lord's service, I don't care what they're here for, we don't need them. If their agenda is them, or their agenda is to take out a sheep, they can go on down the road. That's why God gives a shepherd for the sheep. That's why the shepherd's got a staff called the Word of God. He knows how to handle and run off them wolves. But sometimes the shepherds preoccupied over here with some sheep. I'm glad that there's some good wolfhounds in the church. There's some folks who will say, hey, preacher, I saw this person doing this around the church. Well, we don't need that. And so you got to watch out for them snakes. Hmm? you got to watch out when you go into tall grass. Might be a snake there. So you get those kind of people in churches. But I'm glad that that's not the vast majority of what you'll find in churches. I thought about some others you'll find in churches. The majority of what you'll find in churches. You'll find bakers. Mm -mm. Huh? Bakers are always fixing something for somebody else. Mm -mm. Sometimes it comes out of an oven. Sometimes they just know the right ingredients to put into somebody's life to help them on down the road. Thanks be unto God for somebody that knows how to bake. Now, if you're under the age of 25, Google what baking is. <laughs> but I'm glad that there's some that know how to do it. It amazes when people ask my wife certain recipes. She don't know. She just throws the stuff in there and it comes out wonderful, huh? She has to make it a few times and come up with the recipe. I'm glad there are some folks, they don't need a list on how to help people. They just roll up their shirt sleeves and know how to help people, know how to put a little kindness, know how to put a little compliment, know how to put a little uh, uh, hard work, know how to just be involved in somebody's life to help them on down the road. Thank God that there's folks that know how to fix some folks, and be there for folks and listen to folks and, Thanks be unto God, there's bakers. Know the right ingredient to help folks. I thought of not only bakers, there's makers. They're always building something or somebody. Mm -mm. You know, the Bible tells us we're to edify one another. We're to build up one another. Huh? huh? I'm glad there are makers. There are folks that know how to build. Huh? There's a fellow on that banner back there, Frank Stinson. I never met anybody like good old Frank. Mm -hmm. Loved old Frank. He'd pray all week long. God, show me somebody down that I can be a blessing to. And God, put somebody on his heart and he'd be a blessing to him. Might be come up and give you a piece of candy. Might come up and give you a $100 bill. You never know with Frank. 
He was just somebody that made people feel better about being saved. He just had that knack about him. He just make you feel better. Uh, I'll f never forget the first time he took you to Burger King. Mm -hmm. You got hooked instantly, man. Yeah. Never had had a Whopper till Frank come along. <laughs> then every Friday visitation, he said, "We're going over to Burger King." How do you say catch you checking that out? Uh, uh. Frank just had that ability. He'd pray. I don't know the people he helped. Y'all remember? Well, we, we didn't even have this building yet. We'd come in and there'd be signs along the driveway. That's when it's gravel. And it'd just be a little little sign with a little verse on there, a little, little quote on there, just kind of lift your spirits. Well, everybody thought I did them. I said, I'm not doing it. Everybody trying to figure out who's doing it. Well, one night I come out of church, I thought, you know, I need to run out of church, get something. I come out, I caught him. It was Frank. He'd have them things printed up, and he'd sneak out of here when he thought nobody would be out here and just stick it out there. And, he, and when you come in, it's something to encourage you before you come into church. Frank did stuff like that. I think we still got some of them down the building, don't we? Some of them signs. We used to. Had some of them stuck down there. Frank just tried to encourage people. I knew there'd be people going through a tough time. Frank would go buy their prescriptions for them. Frank take them out to dinner. Frank pay their bills. He just do. He's just a maker. He's just somebody that invested in people's lives just because God had done so much in his life. I'll never forget he come in one time in a Lincoln Continental. Frank traded cars like most people trade their socks. I mean, you know, he, he just loved cars. He come in in this light gray Continental. He pulled in and said, boy, I like your car, Brother Frank. He said, you like that? Yeah. Next week he comes in and he showed me a keychain. He said, I love Jesus. He said, you like my keychain? I said, yeah. He said, you can have it. He handed me the keys to that car. Wouldn't even let me thank him for it. He just gave me that Lincoln. He said, the preacher likes it, I'm going to give it to him. So what would you do? I drove the wheels off of it. That's what I did. <laughs> Thank the Lord all the way down the road. huh? That's just the way Frank was. Remember one time we was going to Bobby Cato's. Go to a meeting. He, Bobby was in revival. And, and uh, him, Frank Stewart, and me and somebody else, we all went. And Frank said, Preacher, you take my Lincoln. He had a nice Lincoln he would bought. Mark 7. He said, you drive my Lincoln, I'll drive Brother Stewart's. He got a, park, uh, a speeding ticket in Brother Stewart's, and I just cruised right on by. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you, you come to church, you'll find that there are people who invest in your life, people that will be there for you. When everybody else is walking out in your life, there will be people there praying for you, being an encouragement, somebody you can think, boy, thank God I've got that. How many of you got good, close friends here in the church? Well, I do. My best friends in the world are sitting here tonight. Folks that you know, like Brother Phil said, you can pick up the phone and call them, and they'll be there, and they'll be there to help you. What a blessing. There are makers. There are bakers. Hallelujah, there are rakers. You know what a rake does? A rake gathers things up. There are some that are just bringing in the sheaves. They're just raking in folks because of their testimony, because of their desire to serve God. They're just planting seed, and they're just raking it. They're just bringing in one at a time, bringing folks into the house of God to uh, 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 learn about Jesus, come to where they can know Jesus. And by the way, you didn't get here by accident. God put somebody in your life to tell you about this place. Thanks be unto God for rakers. And then I thought about this. Just people you'll find in church. There are stakers. Yeah. Stakers you'll find in verse 3. They're steadfast, contending for what's right. They've planted their stake in the things of God. They've just put their foot down and anchored in, and they've made up their mind they're going to bloom where they've been planted. They just claimed their stake. You know, back in, when America was just being formed people would go out and they'd they'd have big days where you could go out and when you planted your stake in a piece of ground that became your piece of ground but there are people that just planted their stake here so I'm just going to grow my family here I'm just going to live here serve God here and let God use my life any way he sees fit thanks, thanks be unto God people have just planted their stake 
at the Emmanuel Baptist Church. Folks that are steadfast. Look around here tonight. There's people that's been here 20 years with me. Some been here. Clint, how long you been here in the church? 40-something years probably by now. Huh? I think you're going to stick. Huh? 40-something years he's been here. Folks been here 20 years. Folks been here 15 years. Folks been here 10 years. Folks, you just got here. Welcome. This is a good place you can hang out for a while. Worship Jesus. Never know what God's going to do in your life around here at the Emmanuel Baptist. Thanks be unto God that, yeah, there's some bad eggs here and there, but the vast majority are folks that love the Lord. I mean, when you came, saw on the sign, Revival Meet, Bobby Cato was preaching. You showed up, never left. Hmm? She did. Remember the first time you all came? You was the wildest looking bunch I'd seen in a long time. I thought, what in the world has happened here? Huh? You had cut off shorts and earrings and muscle shirts and all that. Look at you tonight. Look what God's done in your life. Huh? Yeah, He's done it all. But I remember, I'll never forget, y'all sat in that back row, you come in, I thought, huh, the circus is let out. No, I didn't think that. But I wondered, I thought, where'd this crowd come from? Yeah, and took up that whole row. I was glad to see you. I'm still glad to see you. What a blessing. You've been through a lot, but Jesus has been there every step of the way, has he not? Huh? Just seeing what God's done. God brought you all the way from where you don't even know where you was, underneath the sea somewhere, huh? Got him out of a submarine. Planted him here in northern Kentucky. What a blessing, huh? I'm glad God fitly frames us together and knows what we have a need of. And let me just say this. When you're around the right kind of folks, you really don't feel like you're contending at all. All we do is worship. All we do is come in and celebrate Jesus. And really, isn't that what church should be? Huh? A lot of these praise and worship churches think they're worshiping Jesus. But they turn over their crowd about once a year because what they have won't sustain. But when you get the real thing, it's just wonderful. And I wonder tonight, when is the last time you was just glad for your church family? Hmm? So I want to do this. Can we do this? Brother Clint, can you grab your guitar? Instead of having an invitation, and certainly the altar's open, if you want to come pray, I highly recommend that. But can we just take a few minutes and just enjoy our church family? Go around and tell one another how much we appreciate one another and how thankful we are for one another. Maybe somebody's been a blessing to you. Say, I want you to know you've been a blessing to me and thank you for being a blessing to me. Maybe you just need to go tell somebody you love them. Maybe you just need to remind somebody of something they've done for you in your life that helped you. They may have forgotten about it, but you haven't. Maybe you just need to do that tonight. This be a good night to just celebrate what God's done for us. So can we do that for a few minutes? Just pick out some good, let's fellowship and celebrate music. And let's all stand. And hey, again, if God's speaking to your heart, you need to pray, the altar's open. But this be a good night for you just go and be good to one another. Thank somebody for making something out of your life, for baking something in your life, for staking something in your life, for raking you in here. Just go about and encourage one another. Just play something there, Brother Clint. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.